Hey everybody, Claire here, and today I am with Brian from Club W, and we're talking about something that I think honestly this is what most people do when they shop for wine. Which is look at labels. They just go by the label. Like, yeah. does it look a certain way? And is this a book by its cover thing? Can you actually judge wines by its label? I think so. When we started thinking about this, I mean, we think about this a lot because yeah. we love designing labels. I love beautiful labels. Mm -hmm. And really, a label tells you everything you need to know about a wine. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate problem is it's usually in a different language and you've got to do research to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I'd imagine that if it like had papyrus or comic sans on the thing, you know like to skip it entirely. Right. But yeah. <laughs> so I get the sense that this is something really driven by just good graphic design and kind of what that means. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, for us, like when we're designing labels, oftentimes it's from a philosophy or a concept or mm -hmm. like the why of the wine right. out. Um, but it hasn't always been that way. Usually it's about a place or history. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like where you see like the French wines, like the classic sort of style, which yeah. we have, uh, which we have two of. Yeah. So I think we can kind of go through and look at a couple different marquee styles that you see out in the market and kind of see if, if the label is telling us what like the wine it. is all about. Cool. So this one looks like it's from like a pirate ship because of the wax <laughs> on the top, like pulled from the hull, you know? Yeah. That's and a dead giveaway because you can't <laughs> do that by machine. So you know there's a handmade thing yeah. going on there. Like someone is literally dipping that. They were, they're warming up the wax and then bottle by bottle they're dipping it. It's very simple. There's like so little information here other than like more gone. Right, right. Which actually, I mean, for that wine, it, that tells you where it's from, but mm -hmm. how many people know where more gone is? Exactly. And then you have to figure out what the grape is and then who the winemaker is. Yeah. Um, so it's really complicated. So you can see this Bordeaux label um, is very similar. It tells you everything you need to know, but but who has time to like, like not everybody's like hitting encyclopedias and like exactly. well, of wine and like, you know, doing all the due diligence. Sometimes Wikipedia necessary. is not easy to pull up in the back of a wine shop. What would you expect looking at a wine like this? Um, well, I think these wine, I think the old world wines are kind of tricky. So this, like you pointed out, is definitely a good sign. Like yeah. the hand dip thing, mm -hmm. you're like, they're probably not making a lot of this. It's mm -hmm. pretty special. Um, and while it's a traditional design, I agree with you. It's mm -hmm. very beautiful and yeah. kind of in its simplicity. Minimalist. Yeah, yeah. in its simplicity. This one is a good example of something that, mm, you know, it looks kind of like sophisticated, but I'm not yeah. so sure. This mm -hmm. could just be someone who maybe hasn't changed their label in a long time. Totally. This one seems a lot more thoughtful to me. And yeah. so I'm going to go ahead and say that the wine is potentially more thoughtful and uh, Right. Maybe of higher quality. I like that. And then this is kind of, this looks sort of similar to both of them, but this is from Edna Valley, which is not in France. Right. So I think I think when, when California wines really came into prominence, like post-prohibition and mm -hmm. even in, you know, the 70s and 80s when it's, they really started to improve quality, yeah. they always aspired to like the French, the great French wines. When you see this out of California, you're kind of like, you know, that looks like it's pretty good, yeah. pretty decent, mm -hmm. potentially like a, a wine my mom would drink or something right. like that. But you can like bring the it quality's to a party. probably there. Yeah, you can do it's a good look, mm -hmm. but it's not nothing too exciting. Totally. You know what it, I mean? It also feels to me like it look it's made to look expensive. Because it has like gold on it. Yes. You know? Yeah, it's definitely like a little a little dressed up. A little bit, yeah. In kind of a crusty got, way. Got some lipstick on, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, shall we taste these ones and figure out if they live up to the standards that we've sort of expected for them? Yeah, yeah, let's I think, do it. Let's go for the like artisanal, super fancy pants one. So would you say this tastes like sort of your expectations based off of seeing the label? To me, it, it definitely does. Like, I think we talked about it being very sort of elegant, mm -hmm. herbaceous. It's simple, but it's really pretty. Yeah. Um, and I think it's thoughtful, just like mm -hmm. the design on the front label and thoughtful like the, you know, the wax. The wax. Dipped. So I think we should try this one, right? <laughs> okay. So this, this wants to be Morgone, but it's white. Yep. Um, but it aspires to be that. And it's probably mm -hmm. aspired to be that for quite some time. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, super creamy and kind of buttery. I mean, this is for sure like delicious mom wine where it's like, I think I was describing it to you earlier as like kind of pound cakey. Yeah. <laughs> like very buttery. Like you could bake with it. All right. So this brings us to kind of what I would describe as like Portland wine. Mm -hmm. um, these all look like they're from Oregon to me. 
Right. Because they all have beautiful, especially these two, beautiful minimalist graphic design that is very typography driven. Yes. Yeah. People with beards love a good font. So beards and some like framed glasses. Precision haircut. Definitely high and tight. Yeah. Yeah, high and tight with like a flannel, motorcycle boots. Right, Just denim. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, I think you nailed it there. So like, yeah, we've got Endgame, which is just cool. Awesome font. Mm -hmm. Napa, this is actually a Napa Valley one oh, okay. that, that we made. Um, and we worked with a, a hipster artist, this guy, Keith Davis Young, who's awesome. There we go. He's out of Austin, actually. I'm oh, pretty man. sure he has a beard. Well, also I'm cheating because I can see on the back of this label, it's 14.8% alcohol. It is. Which is a big wine. This is a intense wine. But I also would say that based on the fact that it's a Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa, it's kind of, it, it looks really dark on the label. It's kind of moody. It also feels a little masculine. It's a little manly. It's a little manly. So yeah. I don't know, and to my mind, I would imagine that this would have, it have like almost like a rustic, but a controlled rustic kind of aesthetic. But then, and then this one too, Porter and Plot is, you know, same thing. It's like a really beautiful typeface, super simple. But I would bet that this similarly would have like, I would guess that this would have like a purple fruit kind of vibe to it. Like more like, both of these feel earthy to me. They feel earthy? That's what my crystal ball says. What do yeah. you think? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. This definitely, I agree with you. This is sort of like masculine and mm -hmm. it's not what you normally see historically in Napa. And then I think you nailed this one with the font. And as yeah. we've said, anything that has and in it. An ampersand, the ampersand's a dead giveaway. Is a dead giveaway. If it's blank and blank. Some hipster business. It is some hipster business right there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let's taste them. Should we pop them? Let's you wanna do, do manly? Let's do the manly one. All right. Whoa. What's it like? It's Ooh. just like, well, first off, it's so dark. Like light is not passing through this yeah. in any universe. Look how different that is from the, this, oh. the sort of like elegant. Like refined. Refined wine that it's we so had. It's so different. That first. Well, cheers. Cheers. Mmm. That's surprising. A little more polished than you thought? A little thought? more, but you know what? This isn't that surprising based on the label. Yeah. Cause it's wild, but like curated. Oh. Oh. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more polished than I think you would expect. No, it's, um, and when we say polished, it means that it's not sort of, uh, it feels very contained and almost measured. Yes. Like it's very balanced. Yeah. But we nailed this one. Yeah, I feel like we really nailed it. I feel really good about this. So, okay, there's basically traditional and clean, gives you a very specific sense, but mm -hmm. if there is a lot of graphic design, it kind of points you in a very specific direction. Absolutely. Yeah. But then we have this one, which is a little more, it looks kind of hand-drawn. Yeah. And like kind of like, there's a pig on it. Yeah. Which makes me imagine that like, <laughs> when you, there's a word that's a polite euphemism in wine tasting called barnyard. Yeah. Which usually means it smells like kind of what's in a barnyard. Um, so it has like almost uh, like a sherry quality, like an oxidized sort of like wild yeast kind of vibe to it, right? Yeah, and it smells like a barn. And it smells like a barn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of with you, although the only other thing is that it, it, it kind of falls into that critter wine category. Oh, okay. You know where there are animals, like a happy little pig, or mm -hmm. I don't know, what else is There's like, like a monkey, well, or like... Yeah, you'll see like a cow, or like cow, a horse stallion. Cow, elephants, yellowtail. Yeah, what does critter wine say to you, if there's uh, an animal on the label? It says um, like super simple, sort of user-friendly okay. wine. All right. Cheers. Oh, interesting. It doesn't taste, it doesn't smell like a pig in mud, by the way. I get a little clay, though. It's super earthy and like kind of minerally. Yeah, lighter in color, mm -hmm. a little lighter in color. Although Maybe that's what the mud comes from. What's that? The pig in the mud. Maybe it's more about the mud than the pig. Could be. Yeah. It just happens to. <laughs> it's just like. Mud's not that interesting. Mud, mud as on its, its own on not, a label, so you throw a, a pig on. On a pig, it's adorable. Yeah, then it gets cute. Yeah, then it's, a, it's fun. <laughs> no, it's super clean and light, and it has like a lot of minerality to it. Yeah. It has this, this is gonna sound funny, but it really pleasantly tastes of dirt. So this brings us to our last group, 
which is sort of similar to this, but I would describe it almost as more playful, like a little lighter. It doesn't seem as, this seems really a little more serious and kind of, you know, the graphic design is kind of thoughtfully done. This seems yep. a little more fun. I agree, yeah. These are sort of the, like the poppy style of labels, like yeah. happy colors, bright mm -hmm. colors, sunglasses, mustaches. Well, and cacti. A screw top. And two screw tops. Yeah. And a rosé. And a rosé. So I feel like the screw top tells you that this is something that's ready to drink right now. Yep. So that means it's going to be lighter and easier. And the rosé, I mean, I don't know. I just love rosé. Like, I'm that person where it's like, it's a rosé, and I'll just grab it. Like, yeah. I think rosé is like a f totally like a lifestyle mm -hmm. sort of drink. And are these all Club W? Uh, these three are Club W, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love your guys' graphic design. That's lovely. Isn't that pretty though? It's so good. This is something that like, I mean, just ice cold, some oysters, yeah. like a swimming pool or ocean. Well, this was absolutely so much fun. I thought that this just like could not be a funnier way to prove. I literally thought that we were gonna kind of taste it and be surprised, but yeah. you can really kind of, based on looking at a wine bottle, just give it the extra 30 seconds of looking at it and just think about, okay, where's it from? What does this label tell me based off of the tone it's trying to convey? And that'll tell you a lot about the bottle and the wine that's inside of it. Yeah, Thank you so much. This is great. And if you want to learn so much more about wine, please make sure to check out Club W's awesome, awesome YouTube channel. I'm on it a lot. We're doing all the fun like wine terms, wine tastings. Basically, if you have any questions about wine, if you go there, your questions will most likely be answered. But there's lots of fun stuff. And also check out their Instagram because you guys are posting super fun stuff. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. We have fun. All right. Well, cool. Thanks so much, guys. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.